I imagine that most of you have not heard of homocysteine or why it's important to your health. In 1969, Dr. Kilmer McCulley, a pathologist and researcher at Harvard, reviewed two autopsies of children who died because of suffering a heart attack. This was very unusual because one of these children was seven years old and the other was only three years old. These children had a genetic disorder called homocystinuria. Their genetic defect did not allow them to break down homocysteine, which is a byproduct that comes from metabolizing an essential protein called methionine. You see, normally the body is able to break down this essential protein into homocysteine and then into a more benign product. However, these children with homocystinuria are not able to do this and they have extremely high levels of homocysteine. Homocysteine is known to cause tremendous inflammation of our arteries and in these children it leads to premature heart attacks. Most of these children never see their teenage years because they die prematurely from a heart attack like these two young boys did. Now this led Dr. McCulley to postulate that normal people like you and I, who just had modestly elevated levels of homocysteine, except in this case it would be over a lifetime, could possibly be a major cause of heart disease and strokes in our society. Dr. McCulley's research was initially met with great enthusiasm. However, in the mid-1970s, most of the funding of his research was moved to cholesterol research, and in 1979 he was actually fired. Well, we all know now that cholesterol research and cholesterol-lowering drugs are the mainstay of the medical treatment of heart disease in the world today. However, most of us are not aware of the fact that research done in the late 1980s and early 1990s has shown that nearly 15% of every heart attack and stroke in the world today is the result of elevated homocysteine in your bloodstream. Dr. McCulley was right after all. This is truly sad when you realize that the main reason homocysteine levels in normal people are elevated is because they are deficient in B vitamins like folic acid, vitamin B12, and vitamin B6. Additional medical research has shown us that by simply taking folic acid, vitamin B12, and vitamin B6 in supplementation at these optimal levels, you can reduce these homocysteine levels to a very safe range nearly 60 to 70 percent of the time. Therefore, for pennies a day, we can significantly reduce one of the major causes of heart disease and stroke in the world today. So why haven't you heard much about homocysteine from your doctor? I would imagine that your doctor has checked your cholesterol level. However, has he or she checked your homocysteine level? Do you know your homocysteine level? I have shared in earlier medical minutes that heart disease is not a disease of too much cholesterol in your bloodstream, but instead is the result of low-grade inflammation in your arteries. Well, one of the greatest causes of inflammation in your arteries is elevated homocysteine levels in your bloodstream. However, there just isn't much money in recommending B vitamins. There are no pharmaceutical companies taking out full-page ads in the USA Today warning you of the dangers of high homocysteine levels. Dr. McCulley feels that this is the main reason that Harvard did not want to support his research. There have now been over 50 other clinical trials that have shown that those individuals who have these elevated homocysteine levels are not only at higher risk of developing cardiovascular disease, but also Alzheimer's dementia, cancer, and a host of other chronic degenerative diseases. So my personal feeling is that the lower your homocysteine level is, the better. The best way to lower your homocysteine level is to begin supplementing a healthy diet with optimal or advanced levels of folic acid, vitamin B12, and vitamin B6, which is present in the cellular nutrition I recommend to all of my patients.